Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be reviewing the GoTrax R1. Now this is one of those bikes that I found on Amazon. I figured we'd uh, bring it here, give it a try, go over the specs, give it a test run, see how it compares to other folding bikes. So let's get into it. The GoTrax R1 is a class 2 e-bike, which means you can do 20 miles an hour via the half twist throttle on the right hand side or your five levels of pedal assist. Now it is a direct drive and it does have a cadence sensor. This bike weighs 45 pounds but has a payload capacity of 265 pounds. GoTrax claims that the R1 will do 15.5 miles using the throttle only or you can get up to 25 miles using pedal assist. Currently the GoTrax R1 sells on Amazon for $599. The R1 only comes in one size, and the recommended rider height is from 5'2 to 6'2. It also comes in two colors. You get this black right here with some teal accents, and they also have a white version with red accents. In the rear, we have a 350 watt rear hub motor. It does have a peak of 500 watts. The R1 has a single drive transmission, making this bike super simple to ride and very easy on maintenance. Stopping power is provided by the Jax Super Brake Mechanical Brake System and 160 millimeter rotors on the front and rear. The R1 is rocking some puncture resistant Chow Yang tires. They're 20 by 2.6 inches and they have this off road tread on them. For battery power, the R1 is rocking a 48 volt 7.8 amp hours with 374 watt hours battery. The battery is UL certified and it fits in this down tube right here. Now, one of the great things about that is, is you don't have to like fold the bike up to get to the battery to charge it. There's just a little charging port right here that you can just do it and put it right back on there. The battery charger is 1.5 amps, which means it'll charge this bike up in 5.5 hours. To get access to the battery, well, first you must fold up the bike and then there is a pin over here on this side. You have two keys. You're going to put it in the bottom. You're going to turn the key. It'll pull in a pin. You pull the key out and your battery slides right out. Now you can take it inside the house and charge it right there. To put it back in, well, we're just going to slide it back in. Use your key once again. You have to reinsert it through the hole. Turn it, lock it back in, and put the bike back together. Folding this bike only takes a couple of steps, and let me show you. You're going to pull up on this little button here and pull this lever out. And that right there is going to relax the stem. It's going to come right down. Then you're going to pull out on this little button here and pull that tab out. And then I just lift it up a little bit because this bike's so light. And then you're just going to fold it backwards. This is 37.4 inches. Putting it back together just as easy. We're just going to lift up and bring this around to the front. Reconnect that, pull this up here, pull the lever up, hear it click, there we go. And now it's back together and when it's extended out, well, this is 65 inches. The pedals also fold up. The way they do that is you push them in and flip them up. Although this bike doesn't have any suspension, it does have a pretty plush seat with some shocks on the back here. So we're gonna see how effective that is during our test ride today. Cockpit operations. On your left-hand side here, you have your left-hand grip. It has a palm rest on it. The rubber is pretty hard, and we're gonna see how that actually works during the road test. Here is your front brake lever, and here is your control panel. It is super simple. To start the bike, we're just gonna hold this M button here, as you can see, it is a single color display, but it gives you your energy bar, your speed, what pedal assist level you're in, and your overall odometer reading. As you can see, there is no miles on this bike. By hitting the M button, it changes a couple other things. You can track your trip mileage, you can track your max speed, and then it goes back to the main screen. If you wanna move up in pedal assist levels, well, you're gonna hit the plus button, and that takes you all the way up from pedal assist one through five and then you're gonna bring it right back down with the minus button. Let's see if this thing has a walk feature. I'm gonna hold it up, hold down the, the minus button. Oh my gosh, it does. 
So this bike has a walk feature as well. Okay, that was surprising. Did not expect that. This bike is also equipped with a headlight and a taillight. So to turn that on, where well, you're just gonna hold that plus button and it turns on the light, as you can see right there, it pops up on the indicator. And now you have your headlight and your taillight, which I think is pretty amazing for a bike this, uh, this price point. And it's a brake light as well. On your right hand side here, you have your palm grip with a half twist throttle. As you can see, the, the bike's in zero pedal assist, so the throttle is providing no power to the bike. It does come with a bell. I believe the bell was on this other side when I first got it, but I moved it over here to make it easier to get to. And then you have your rear brake. Now, the main thing that interested me in getting this bike is the fact that it only has one gear. I mean, I've reviewed other folding e-bikes before, but they all have derailers, they have shifters. This bike seems very basic, it seems very simple. I'm excited to see how a single drive is gonna perform, and well, let's get out on the road and find out. It is time to do the road test. I started Strava, we restarted the trip, so we're gonna see if uh, how accurate this thing is. And right now, with it being a single drive, like there's just no other gear to get into. So right now, comfortably, we're doing about 9.9 .9 miles an hour without any power. Went ahead and added a couple of my safety things. I got my Seco light here for my blinking daytime running light and my half knee bar and mirror. Why is this speedometer off so much? Oh, it's set at 22 inch tires. Let's get it down to 20. There we go. I went ahead, dropped it back down to 20, which then gave us an accurate reading on the display. So now the display and the speedometer, the GPS speedometer matches up, I'll show you. So as you can see, they're both, they're both matching up now. So because of that, I'm like, all right, well, let's now do the time test and redo the, uh, the pedal assist levels so that we get like a true reading on what those are gonna be. All right, let's go ahead and see what our pedal assist levels are with this bike. We have it in pedal assist level one. Let's see what our speeds are. 9 miles an hour in pedal assist one is what you're going to be comfortable at. Let's go ahead and put it in pedal assist number two. Don't really notice much of a difference there. We are at 11 miles an hour in pedal assist two, pedal assist three. Go ahead. Now, 13 miles an hour, pedal assist four. Now I'm starting to feel it kick a little bit. 15 miles an hour in pedal assist number four, pedal assist number five, let's go. And with pedal assist number five, we're gonna be cruising at 18 and a half miles an hour. So now the throttle test should take us up to 18 miles an hour because when we changed it and got it correct, well, this bike taps out at 18 miles an hour. See, as you can see right there, it's tapping out at the 18. Let's go ahead and do the throttle time test. We're gonna take it up to 18 miles an hour. That's how much the bike will go now that we read it, reset it to the correct tire size. And here we go. Let's see how long it takes. Let's go. It takes off like not aggressive, but nicely. All right, it's not gonna throw you back, but you also don't feel like you're just creeping along either. All right, right there, 18. As you can see, we're starting to chew through the battery and we've only done about five miles. But with this bike, it's not made to go very far anyways. All right, let's go ahead and find out how fast we can go from zero to 18 or 20 that this bike will do now. Oh, and just pedal assist only, you ready? Let's go. Oh, there we go. Good pickup. And right there. Now we're gonna see how quick we can go from zero to top speed using pedal assist, using throttle, using all of it. Let's go. Ooh, nine seconds. With this bike, it is the most comfortable riding uh, speed and cadence when it's in pedal assist number five. So that's what we'll be doing this review in. So I don't expect this battery to last very long at all. 
Let's talk size and fit. Now with this bike, it says it can handle riders up to 5'2 to 6'2, and it does have lines on the seat post, and this is the minimal height, and then 6'2, let's take a look at this other set of lines here, Woo! oh, <laughs> the lines keep going, all right, right there, that is the highest part right there, don't forget that you can adjust this up and down, so right there would be your setup for your 6'2 person with incredibly long legs. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put this back. Now, I mentioned before this bike is 65 inches, uh, which means with me being 6'9", well, I can look right over this bike when you go ahead and pull it up. Now, it is pretty small, so I just wheel it into the garage. I don't have to stand it up like this to get it in between the two cars. The handlebars aren't very wide on this bike. I mean, it's pretty nimble. It's easy to maneuver, so but we are burning up some battery, so let's go ahead. I'm going to do the brake test first before we do the hill climb, just to make sure that the, the hill climb doesn't, well, gas it out and we don't have uh, energy for the brake test. So, see you there. It is brake test time. Let's go ahead. We're going to get this bike up to 20 miles an hour. We're going to slam on the brakes. We'll see what happens. Let's go. Let's go. We are at 26 feet. All right, well, I thought it would actually stop a little bit quicker, but it does have 160 millimeter rotors, and I've never heard of these, uh, these brakes before, so let's give it another shot. All right, brake test number two, let's go. <laughs> 26 feet again. All right, well, now we know 26 feet will get you to a complete stop. Well, so far, the seat is pretty comfortable, kind of surprised on that, although pleasantly surprised, I might say. The grips, although they are a harder plastic, I don't mind those either. Those are feeling pretty good. This bike is not making any rattling noise. And I know that sometimes when I'm dealing with a bike, uh, especially one like this where it has the battery tucked in with this kind of shape and foldable that the battery will rattle inside the frame and this is not doing that at all. This is also one of those kind of bikes where it just feels more like a scooter, like it's just easier to use the half twist throttle and cruise around on it because you know it is small, it's light and you just want to just have a little fun on it. So when it comes to these half twist throttle bikes I always end up using that more than I do the pedaling, which of course hurts the, uh, the battery on how far you can go. Well, it doesn't hurt it, but it just, you know, makes it to where the, the amount of travel that we can go on a battery is, you know, severely limited. But I mean, if that's the most comfortable way to ride this bike, then that's how I'm gonna ride it. The uh, cadence that I'm doing is very gentle and it's holding the bike at this 18 miles an hour. So instead of having to push it every time, well, all we have to do is just basically keep moving your feet and it'll hold that speed. Brakes are a little squeaky though, but I haven't, uh, oh, it's that back one. I didn't, I haven't, bet, I forgot to bed the brakes. So if it squeaks, well, that's my fault. It is time for a little off-road action. This is where we can start hearing things. All right, now I am hearing some noise from the battery. Rattling around a little bit, but it's taking some off-road action to get it to bounce around and make some noise. And luckily I know to put a little bit of felt in there to totally stop that issue. So it's not like it's a real problem because you can easily, <laughs> I went off that jump, you can easily fix it. But that's the only time I've heard it, which is better than most. I mean, for this to be a serious budget bike, it's, it's doing pretty good. As I'm on this bike, here's what I'm picturing like, the, like people would be able to use this bike for. Let's say you're at a, um, let's say you have an RV and you're at a mount or you're at a campground 
and you want to cruise around the campground, but you don't want a bike that's going to take up a lot of space, well, this would be one of them for that. Plus, it's super light, so you could lift it up, put it wherever you needed to put it, and it would just work out rather well. Um, also, like uh, maybe like a younger, like a teenager that's looking to get into their, like they need a bike and you wanted to get them an e-bike. Well, I think that this would be a good bike for that as well. So, I mean, there's like different applications that I keep picturing that this bike would be good for. Here is the hill test. This only has a 350 watt motor. So I don't expect it to make it up the hill, but we're gonna see how far it goes. Let's go. Well, it's got a pretty good kickoff. We are, oh my gosh, are we gonna make it up this thing? Oh, 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 oh yes. If so, this is the first bike with a 350 watt motor that has made it up this hill and we have made it. What in the, that is silly. Well, I'm impressed by that guys, I have to tell you. For this bike to be so small, so nimble, only having one gear and it's doing that, this is like the little engine that could. Now we're gonna try it one more time. We're gonna see how easy it is using pedal assist. Here we go. Let's just try it this way. And oh yeah, I mean, it's, it's super easy going up. Now I do have it in pedal assist five, but going up there is pretty easy, but I'm just super surprised that it did it throttle only. Uh, see, now this battery's rattling around. It's gonna start driving me nuts though. But this is the last off-road thing that we're doing the rest of the street. And then I'll go ahead when I get home, I'll put that felt on there, keep that battery from bouncing around and we'll be good to go. Another thing I've noticed about this bike is that it is not, like it won't cut you off when you hit 20 miles an hour. I ended up going down a hill and I was going faster than 20 and some bikes will like try to govern it back. Like you can feel the bike trying to keep you from like freewheeling down it. And this is not one of those kind of bikes. Like it, it, it let me go ahead and do that, no problem. We are at our first mileage update. Now, the display is showing that we've gone 11.4 miles, but I ended up doing part of this ride with the settings at 22 uh, inches for tires instead of 20. I don't know why it wasn't set for 20, but I went ahead and fixed that. Um, so it's showing that we're at 11.4. We have about 45% battery power, and I'm only guessing that because I'm assuming that each one of these little hashes are 5% on the battery. Now, Strava shows that we've done 10.98, and I believe that if I would have started off with the tire size set at 20 inches instead of 22, well, I believe that these both would have been tracking because 10.98 and 11.4, if we would have uh, had it start, if I had redone this whole trip all over again with the 20 inch wheels set correctly, well, I believe it would be correct. So I know we don't have enough battery power to make it out to Lakeshore Drive and back. So I'm gonna end up cruising around the city, uh, kind of close to home. So that way, if it does run out of battery, I won't have far to make it to the house. So let's get going. We are down to 15% battery power. Uh, let's see, trip shows that we've done 17.1. Strava shows we're at 1654. I mean, it's it, it makes sense. Yeah, we're gonna start heading home. I have rain clouds right here, so I'm not even sure what's going on. I'm not wearing a raincoat and this bike's about out of power. So let's head back and see how far we make it before this thing runs out. Now we're gonna see if this, this climb is gonna kill this battery. Oh, climbed it, no problem. I definitely need to work on these brakes. That's my fault. I'm the one that uh, didn't bet them. So I'll end up taking it to the bike lane. They'll hook me up. They know how to make these things stop squeaking.
So let's go ahead and check now that the battery is at 15% if it is still going to hold the throttle at 18 miles an hour. Let's see where we're at here. Yep, so far so good. Even at 15%, we still have full throttle. Okay guys, check it out. The energy bar is just flashing. That is not good. But we still have it in pedal assist five and we're doing about 14 miles an hour. I'm afraid to even test the throttle at this point because I'm still about a mile away. Now we're at 11 miles an hour. I'm not sure if we're still getting any power to this bike, to be honest. Let me see if we have throttle. Let's just go ahead and see. No, I feel it. I feel like we still have throttle. So we're going to keep uh, just trucking on. I mean, I can feel the assist. So it's, it's not there a whole lot, but it is there. I'm going to go ahead and put it in pedal assist zero to see if I notice any difference. Oh, yeah, I noticed a difference. All right, let's go kick that back up to five. Oh, it's starting to rain. You know, I don't know the IPX rating on this bike. It didn't say it on the uh, Amazon ad. I also know that my microphones are not IPX rated. So even though my GoPro is fine with the rain, so would my 360, my uh, wireless mics will not be. So let's get home. I'll give you my final thoughts. This bike is not giving any power. If it is, it's extremely low. <laughs> I have made it back just in time. It looks like it's gonna rain at any second. So let's talk about this bike here real quick. Uh, Strava said that we made it 19.93 miles. And since that is correct, that's what we're gonna go with. I mean, the display shows we're at 20.5, but as we talked about, we spent part of that in tire size. 22 inches instead of 20. Once we fix that, well, then everything started running exactly the same. So if you end up getting this bike, go ahead, hop in the menu real quick and make sure that yours says 20 instead of 22. Now, with that being said, there are some prizes that I had with this bike. Number one, it went a lot farther than what I thought it would. And it climbed that hill. It's the first bike with a 350 watt motor that has been able to climb that hill. So that was impressive. This, it's like the little engine that could, right? It's just like chugging right up the thing. The seat though, ugh. you know, after these 19 miles or whatever, I felt it, right? So, but you know, it only costs like 30, 40 bucks to switch a seat out. Now I feel for other people, if you had like a teenager or somebody like that, who just wanted to get into uh, e-bikes, this would be a good one to start with. Or if you were in like a city and you had very little space because it folds up to 37 inches. I mean, that's pretty tiny and the bike is pretty light at 45 pounds. So that gives you plenty of options. Or like I said before, like you have an RV, you're at a campground, uh, you can put a couple of them, throw them underneath, and you would totally be fine and have a good time. So if you're interested in this bike, I'm gonna send you to the Amazon link. Go ahead and click on my link below right here, and that'll take you to the Amazon ad where I found this bike. Well, it is starting to rain. Thank you for watching, and until I see you again, enjoy the ride.